Good evening. How's it going out there, everyone? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, June 26, 2025. Tomorrow is Friday. Finally made it here to the end of the weekend, just about. Uh, June 26, 2025, 10.30 p.m. California time. Latest activity here shows a... Uh, there's a 3.9 out here down across South America in the red flag. Latest quake, though, in the green flag. It looks like across Southern California here. Uh, right off the, the uh, southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault. Little small microquake there. Nothing big going on for now. Uh, these are pretty shallow earthquakes, though. So some uh, crustal quake activity going on. Again, just off that southern branch. Uh, as far as anything above 2.5, well, not a whole lot there in Southern California today, <clears throat> as far as that level goes. Uh, same for up north, venturing into Northern California here. The Bay Area is pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of activity throughout Northern California. Uh, across the no northwestern Nevada here, got a decent swarm of activity. Uh, about 18 earthquakes or so of various magnitudes. It looks like they're starting to get a little bit stronger in there as well. With a 3.4, I believe, is the largest so far. And that, that was just earlier this evening. So watching that, I was out here a few years ago investigating uh, an earthquake swarm. Not quite, um, well, it was more intense than this. Uh, we were talking about um, a couple hundred earthquakes a day happening out there. So I went out there, drove from down here in Chico, California to investigate what was going on. There was nothing but dirt roads out there for miles. Nobody out there around the Sheldon National Wildlife Refuge. A lot of volcanic activity, though. Uh, so we could be seeing some of those uh, uh, earthquakes related to uh, not current volcanic activity, but um, these look like they're just not around any fault systems here. So I don't know if there's uh, maybe some pressurization going on down below there because these are all over the place as far as the variable or the uh, depth of these earthquakes. Anywhere from surface at zero uh, miles down to uh, three or four or so. So continue to watch that. Definitely uh, a little bit of earthquake activity there today. Uh, across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, a very shallow crustal quake here this afternoon, a 1.2. Uh, now, of course, this earthquake from this morning, 4.4, adding further strain downstream here, directly in this fashion towards the southern end of the Cascadia. Surprisingly, we don't have any tremor activity here today. Uh, none being reported. So I find that a little odd. Things are pretty well compacted and stressed there along the southern end of the Cascadia. So got to watch that closely as well. Um, the movement up around Mount Rainier, a couple smaller earthquakes up here. Again, we were looking at this earlier on the um, volcano seismicity map of Mount Rainier. And it's hard to say, uh, looking at some of these maps here, uh, it almost looks like there's a lot of earthquake activity occurring up here, but there's quite a bit of snow melt. This is the last oh, five hours or so, some of those smaller quakes right here. This is some type of instrument adjustment. Very small spikes there on the Mount Rainier station. If we look at the previous 24 hours, there's quite a bit of uh, small microquake activity in there as well. And, uh, you know, some of these smaller ones, it's... Uh, you know, they could be earthquakes, uh, but possibly here with the snow melt runoff, uh, some erosion going on there, you get uh, occasional rock falls and rock adjustment and stuff like that. Could be uh, picking up that on the maps here. I know they've talked about it before, but as uh, far as anything major going on there across that volcano, nothing, nothing new to report. Uh, one earthquake up there around Mount St. Helens. Uh, the rest of the Cascadia up here looks pretty quiet. Uh, let me check out the Earthquake 3D globe. There's that movement up at the northern end of the Cascadia earlier this morning as well. Nothing new to report there. Uh, it does look like some uh, migrational movement across the Aleutian Trench in the northern section here of the Pacific Plate. I'll check that out here in just a second. I do want to double check Yellowstone. See if there's anything of any noteworthy value here. Some wind out there earlier. Always, or maybe even some storms out there as well. But that always occurs it seems like in the afternoon time period. And then it dies off. And then it kicks back up in the afternoon. It'll probably do it again tomorrow. Uh, but as far as earthquake activity goes, uh, really not seeing a whole lot there. There's some activity in Moose Creek, Idaho. That was early this morning here. Three earthquakes being reported. Uh, looks like the USGS uh, reported all three of those as well. 1.8, 1.9, 1.9. 
and a 1.7 well defined on that seismograph station but uh yeah, not a whole lot else going on there across yellowstone national park super volcano oil fields a little bit less active out here today still some smaller microquake movement but uh, overall things look like they're um slowing down for now but it's you know they they come in waves like any other earthquake activity out here around the globe it just comes in sequences here nothing going on across the new madrid or the eastern portion of the country there's that activity up into the Aleutian Trench here. Got some uh, some earthquakes around the 2.5 level and above, the largest being a 3.8, just prior here to the subduction zone of the Aleutian Trench. As uh, far as the Japan region here, two earthquakes in the last 24 hours in our uh, kind of in our zone here to the south, where the Nankai Trough sits, the southern end it looks like. Got a uh, 4.9, more recent. And a previous 4.6 here, 43 miles deep into that subduction zone called the Japan Trench, right here. But aside from that, uh, let's see what we got for the Curl Camp Chat. Uh, nothing going on up north here. Uh, a lot of movement. If you notice here in the last couple days, all that pressurization we've been seeing out here with the swarms around Philippines, northward. Well, that's migrated here in the last couple days, northward to where we're seeing the current new activity take place. Uh, Myanmar region north. Word. It looks like a 5.1 into the China area. One of the latest somewhat moderate quakes out here. Keep an eye on that because it's, uh, yeah, it's starting to show some signs of strain out here with the uh, increasing earthquake activity. Australia, 3.5 west coast, 2.5 east coast. Not a whole lot of activity happening down there for now. Uh, some deeper activity returning to the Tonga Trench in uh, New Zealand here. Uh, threes appear to be the magic number out there. Th latest quake of 3.4. Looks like that is awfully close there to the Alpine Fault southern end. I'll keep an eye on that. Um, let's see what else we got. Mediterranean pretty quiet. Looks like Iceland up there is starting to stir up a little bit. So we better double check see what's going on there across the Iceland earthquake map, which is uh, right about here. Should be getting close to an eruption again, I would suppose. Although the earthquake activity here, not around the region of interest, up north and to the east here across this rift boundary. I don't see any major swarming going on there across the Iceland area. Uh, we can check some inflation charts real quick across that volcano there at the Savart Singi area. Uh, we're still going up. Our last eruption, somewhat of an eruption, there was a few months back. Still just going up here with no signs of any, uh, uh, you know, impending eruption. Just definitely building up there in terms of the inflation. And that's across the um, Savart, yeah, the Savart Singi area there, southwestern area of that rift zone in Iceland. Uh, aside from that, let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe, see if there's anything else going on. It's the Atlantic pretty quiet southward. Um, around the Puerto Rico Trench here, starting to get a little uptick going on there across the region again with some newer activity. Got, uh, looks like a couple twos, the latest of 3.8, although there's a number of earthquakes more listed up here on the map, so I'm not for sure why they're not showing up on the USGS side of things, but it uh, looks a little bit more active out here today. South America, looks like they just had a four-pointer here, fairly recent, down there off the coast of Chile. It's way down south here. Nothing sh nothing showing up here on the USGS map. What is going on here? Of course, they, uh, for the most part, will only report 4.5 and above, and occasional reporting two or threes, wherever <laughs> it may decide to come in at. But, uh, yeah, pretty decent swarm of activity here, though. Uh, all four of these quakes into the subduction zone. The latest, a deep quake up north here, uh, 386 miles deep. That's a deeper one out of all of them. Watch this. Watch the uh, region upstream here. A lot of strain builds up here across this region, and not a whole lot of surface adjustment taking place here. All four deep earthquakes, some uh, shallow earthquake activity down south, but watch this specific area upstream here. Normally, deeper activity tends to add strain up at the uh, the subduction zone interface area where it locks up and produces the big earthquakes, you know. 
Uh, far as, uh, well, actually, I can go over here. Let me close that out real quick. Bring up the Kilauea Volcano site, which is right here. Let's see how we're looking on the uh, Big Island. I don't see any eruption yet. Quick glance here at the inflation chart. Shows that we're going back up after a little bit of stationary tilt there. Not a whole lot of uh, inflation, but uh, we're going back up. Should see another eruption here. Oh, I'm probably thinking we have another two to three days or so uh, before that decides to uh, erupt once again. It's just been on a rinse and repeat cycle here since uh, December of last year. Pretty crazy, but pretty neat to see as well. All right, space weather activity. Uh, looks like we're up in the KP index around five plus here. Uh, that's due to a high speed solar wind stream where a G2 class storm is uh, possible, but it doesn't look like the auroras are kicking up out here. Let's see what's going on with the uh, real time solar wind stream. And uh, as expected here, it does look like uh, well, there's a little bit of southward BZ point there on those run times, those little red dots, but really not wide open that you would want if uh, you want to see the auroras out there. High speed wind stream did kick up a little bit, um, but yeah, being suppressed. Not a whole lot of uh, potential there for the auroras right now. Far as any major solar flares go, wow, we are way down there. B 5.2, that is uh, pretty low. There's uh, it looks like there was a little bit of sea flare activity earlier, but that's Wow, <laughs> sea flare. Uh, not really looking at any major sunspots out here. Let's take a look here at what we do have. And uh, there's, man, there's really not a whole lot. Not anything of noteworthy value either. This is a massive area in terms of coverage, but uh, not a whole lot of complexity. Same for these other areas. Uh, coming around the northeastern limb of the sun, it looks like another sunspot there uncertain though on if that if that's going to be anything of value far as you know stronger solar flares i'm guessing it's going to be this area right here there is however a deeper darker region out there indicating a, a fairly solid big size sunspot um, that will be uh, peeking around the corner here of the eastern limb this is the far side of the sun uh, but this area right here is a massive sunspot region former sunspot 4105 they just they go back around and they come back around and it's just it's the same sunspots with different numbers occasionally we get some new sunspots that pop pop up out of the blue that are really legitly new sunspots but for the most part they just go around and then they come back around and get renamed so we'll watch 4105 the former 4105 will get renamed here to something new once it comes around the eastern limb there within the uh, earth direction far as anything uh, major going on overnight for severe weather looks like a slight risk up here across the minnesota area portions well wisconsin iowa um some minimal over here so just some general thunderstorm activity but the main focus here around indiana or uh um where's my brain at tonight uh wisconsin stretching into iowa there we go. And looks like uh, due to a 2% chance of some tornado activity, some wind threats, uh, not a whole lot of hail, but mainly wind overnight. Uh, now for the day tomorrow, let's see here. Tomorrow, this is uh, for Friday. All right, tomorrow, it's Friday, yes. Got a slight risk back here across the Dakotas, mainly for a tornado threat there. Looks like a 5 and 2% zone, some big time wind. And some big time hail. Not a whole lot of uh, severe weather down south, just general thunderstorm activity. Uh, quick glance at the, let's bring the uh, windy map here. I'll take a look here at the, um, okay, I get it. Exit uh, at the rainfall. Runs out here. I think it'd be better with this model. We'll put this in run here for the next uh, week, it looks like. Northern California looks like some thunderstorms uh, popping up there in the southern Oregon as well. A whole bunch of rainfall across the areas east of the Rockies. 
I mean, uh, pretty dry out here across the West Coast. Of course, it is our dry season. Monsoonal moisture coming up there from the south uh, into the uh, New Mexico area. As far as any hurricane potential out here, we're still watching uh, disturbance number one. Uh, there is a 90% chance here in the next seven days of uh, cyclone formation, but that shouldn't really affect too much out here. Uh, on the Central Pacific, nothing going on. The Atlantic out there shows. Looks like a, wow, a little spot down here, maybe entering into the Gulf. 20% chance here in the next seven days. So really not a whole lot of uh, uh, potential for that one, but we'll definitely watch it. The waters are warm, getting uh, deeper into summer, and of course uh, that's when we start getting into hurricane season out there. Anyway, folks, uh, we'll keep an eye out here across the West Coast. Um, it's been relatively quiet up here in northwestern Nevada up until the last couple days so the pressure is there uh, it's really stirred up here following this event earlier today uh, a lot of pressurization here across the plate boundary itself that's a subduction zone and strain uh, does w does go well inland but that's the main area of the focus right now even that shallow crustal quake there a sign of uh, uh, the strain out there along the Cascadia all right folks have a good one we'll see you guys back out here in the morning take care and uh all the seismograph stations out there all look pretty quiet for now. One little earthquake on the Mendocino station, but uh, uh, that's probably not going to show up here on the map. Just too small, it looks like. Take care, folks. Have a good night.